page 79, number 10. How can water be turned into wine in every born-again Christian's life? Or how can the words that come out of the mouth of every born-again Christian become spirit and life? John tells us, turning water into wine was the first miracle Jesus performed in his ministry. John 2 verse 11 Jesus wants to perform this first miracle of water being transformed into wine or words coming out of the mouth of a born-again Christian becoming spirit and life. How can that be performed? Mary told the servants, in order to have that miracle, they need to do whatever Jesus tells them to do, even if it does not make any sense to their carnal mind, but it makes faith. John 2 verse 5 The Bible says that there were six water pots of stone. Now the number six for the Hebrew signifies that God will not rest until he has completed the creative miracle you need for your life and godliness. For God created the world in six days in the account of Genesis 1 and rested on the seventh day. And when Boaz gave six ephahs of barley to Ruth, Naomi explained to her what it meant, saying, Sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out. For the man, even Jesus, will not rest until he has concluded the matter this day. Ruth 3, verse 17 to 18. We are co-laborers or co-workers with Christ in his creative miracles. God has his part to play and we have our part to play. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. All the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen. Yet someone needs to pray them through so that it will be made manifest on earth as it is in heaven. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 and Luke 11 verse 2. Now the water pots of stone represent the life of every born again Christian. Paul says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 And again Paul says, In a great house, the house of God, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also vessels of wood and of earthenware, and some to honour and some to dishonour. 2 Timothy 2 verse 20 Thus you and I, born again Christians in the context of John 2, are the water pots of stone. Jesus asked servants to fill each water pot with water. For the six water pots to be filled to the brim, it takes between 100 and 150 gallons, so between 450 litres and 675 litres. In those days, they did not have water taps like we have, so that they could plug a pipe onto the tap and fill the water pots to the brim effortlessly. They did not have pumps either, so that they could just pump water to the surface and fill those water pots. They had to walk to the well like the Samaritan woman who came to the well of Jacob in John 4 to fetch water. The well was deep and you needed a bucket tied on a long rope to draw water from that well. Now the water talks about the word of God in Ephesians 5 verse 26. The well where you draw the deep water of the Word of God is the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, even the 66 love letters of God. The well is also Jesus Christ, because He is the Word of God. Revelation 19 verse 13 and John 1 verse 1 Jesus Christ is the well of Jacob. His Word gives life, and as you read the Bible you will see Jesus. Jesus says, you study and search the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. John 5 verse 39 You can only draw a bucket at a time. I remember when I visited some of our relatives in Pontenoir in Republic of Congo when I was in primary school. 
They did not have running water, so they had a well in the middle of their compound. They used a small bucket of five litres tied to a long rope to draw water from that deep well. The well was about 20 metres deep. I asked once, why do you not tie up a bigger bucket to the rope so that you will be able to fill your basins and water pots faster? So they tied up a 10 litre bucket at the end of that rope and asked me to draw water for that day for the whole family. It was a big family, so you needed about 200 litres to 300 litres for every day. For everybody to shower, cook and wash dishes, and when they did their laundry, you needed about 500 litres that day. With my fast brain, I said that with that 10 litre bucket attached to the rope instead of the 5 litre bucket, I would be able to fill up the basins and water pots in just 20 to 30 drawers instead of 40 to 60 drawers. So I started to draw water. I only drew five buckets and I was already tired, sweaty and had pain in my biceps and they made fun of me. Of course I only drew half of the water needed that day and gave up. But the next morning they attached the five litre bucket onto that rope and I drew water for everybody to shower, about 200 litres. And when I had finished I was not as tired as sweaty and in pain in my biceps as the previous morning. Someone may ask, what is the point of that story? It's simple. Some Christians also set unrealistic goals in reading their Bible, praying in line with the Word of God, and fasting, which is drawing water from the well. So they say, I will read ten chapters of the Bible every day. And they do it for five days and give up. Some say they will read fifty chapters every day. They will do it for a week and then give up. They say, I will pray for five hours every day. They do that for one week and give up. Start with one hour. Jesus commanded every born-again Christian. Some people will say, I will fast for 21 days, three times a year. They do it once and give up. Start with 10% of the month. Just fast for three days every month. The reason why they attach that small bucket of 5 litres to the rope instead of the 10 litre bucket is because they wanted it to be almost effortless for everybody in the house, light and easy even for children. Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11 verse 28 to 30 There is a yoke and a burden in Christianity that every born-again believer ought to take upon themselves and learn from Jesus. See the Bible study on the return journey Gilgal, Jordan East. Yes, some people in Christendom, especially those in the fivefold ministry, will be asked by God to do more, because they are like spiritual parents to the body of Christ. But every born again Christian ought to do the minimum Christ Jesus requires from us. In the house of my relatives, even children of seven years old could fetch their own water to shower. So, in the morning, parents did not have to fetch water for their children. The children did it. When we set realistic goals for reading the Word of God, praying and fasting, we can keep them. Yes, it might take you longer to fill your water pot to the brim, but you will fill it. Whereas if you set unrealistic goals for reading the Word of God, praying and fasting, you might give up because you cannot keep it up and you will never fill your water pot to the brim. Have a realistic plan to read these Bible studies and your Bible. Those servants at the wedding of Cana of Galilee kept on going back to the well to draw water in order to fill the water pots to the brim. You and I will have to go back to the written word of God over and over to be filled to the brim or to saturation with revelation of the word of God. 
Paul says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Colossians 3 verse 16 Jesus says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will or desire, and it shall be done unto you. John 15 verse 7 Prayer and the revelation of the knowledge of God and His Word go hand in hand. Those servants had to go and fetch water from the well and fill the water pots to the brim. Jesus will not do that for you. You and I will have to read our Bible and Bible studies. Jesus will not do it for us. The preparations of the heart belong to man, or are the responsibilities of man, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Proverbs 16 verse 1 So after they have filled the water pots to the brim, or after the revelation of the word of God abides in you, Jesus asked those servants to draw out some water from those water pots and pour it into the cup of the master of the feast. John 2 verse 7 to 8 Until then it was still water, not wine. Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. John 14 verse 25 to 26 the job of the Holy Ghost is to teach you all things as you study the Bible and to bring to your remembrance what is written in the Bible when you face a situation. The Holy Spirit will not read the Bible nor study the Bible for you, so if the water pots are empty, you cannot draw out any water from them to pour out into the cup of the Master of the Feast. Speak only in line with the written word of God that you have read and studied. Paul says, Now, brothers and sisters, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, Do not go or think beyond what is written in the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 6 Many times people want to think and speak outside this Bible. The Holy Spirit is not going to confirm that. John the Baptist tells us, He whom God has sent speaks the words of God. Then, no doubt, or that is why, God gives him the Spirit without measure. John 3 verse 34 in that John 2, had the servants refused to draw out that water from the water pots they had filled to the brim to pour it out into the cup of the master of the feast because it was still water, they would never have had the miracle. It was when the water was poured into the cup of the master of the feast that it was turned into wine. Never say that it is just the written word of God. In other words, it is just mere water. Believe it will be turned into wine when you draw it out of you and pour it into someone else's vessel. I went to visit friends of mine, Pastor Jean and his wife, Pastor Nina. She was like Martha, busy with much serving instead of fellowshipping with us. After three hours in the kitchen, when she finally came into the living room to join us, I only had half an hour to talk to her and pray. I said to her, What do you want God to do for you? She told me her heart desires. And I said to her, Open your Bible and read the scriptures I'll give you. She read four scriptures I gave her and started to praise God saying, Oh Lord, I thank you because you have spoken to me once more concerning my worries and heart desires through the mouth of your servant. You see, she was the empty cup of the master of the feast, and I drew out water from my water pot to pour it into her empty cup. But when that water was poured into her cup, the miracle happened. It was now wine or spirit. God says to you and me, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Psalm 81 verse 10 
for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Matthew 10 verse 20 It is a spirit that quickens or makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. John 6 verse 63 I just spoke words in line with the written word of God, and they became spirit and life to the one in need. On the crossover night of 2014 to 2015, we just shared the Holy Communion, and I explained how Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted in Luke 4 verse 18. One of the sisters that night after the night vigil was over could not sleep. She wept for a long time because of that Luke 4 verse 18. I just took the water of the word of God that was in me and poured it into her vessel and it became wine or spirit to heal her brokenheartedness. Notice, when you read in John 2, Jesus did not tell the servants, draw water from the well and bring it directly to the master of the feast. Had they done that, it would still be water when it was poured into the cup of the master of the feast. God covenanted to work with us and through us. We are co-laborers with Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 Many people take their Bible and read chapters to people, but what they read does not impart life to the hearers. Paul says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 5 to 6 God will work through you, the minister of reconciliation. You are his water pot. If you are empty, you will have no living water to draw out, to quench the spiritual thirst of the people. You will be a noise in the wilderness, instead of being a voice in the wilderness. Matthew 3, verse 3 The word of God must become flesh in you first of all, before it can impart life to the hearers, otherwise it will just be letters and noise. Some people will say, why is there a difference between two ministers of reconciliation? They both read the Bible to us. How is it the same scriptures coming out from the mouth of the first are void of life, but the ones coming out of the mouth of the second are spirit and life? The thing is, the first minister is trying to draw out water from the well and bring it to the people instead of filling first his water pot and drawing out of his own water pot. If the word of God means so little in your own personal life, the power of God will also be little in your life. If Jesus is our Lord and Saviour, we will embrace his way, truth and life, and not choose what we like in his life and reject what we do not like. Jehovah, the God of Israel, says, I said indeed, your Eli's house and the house of your father should walk before me for ever. But now Jehovah says, Be it far from me, for those who honour me I will honour, and those that think little of me or despise me shall be lightly regarded or esteemed. 1 Samuel 2 verse 30 This he said about the sons of Eli who were not living in holiness and about David, a man after his own heart, when he committed adultery and murdered Uriah. God said, I gave your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that was too little, I would have given to you such and such things besides. Why have you despised the word of Jehovah, to do evil in his sight? You have stricken Uriah the Hittite with a sword, and have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the sons of Ammon. 2 Samuel 12 verse 8 to 9 I remember when the Lord healed my backsliding, but I was still struggling with my sexual desire. I was tempted to sin by a non-Christian girl. But I have disciplined myself to read my Bible and pray in the morning. 
Then the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance 2 Samuel 12, 8-9. And he said to me, My son, do not sin against me, for there are many nations at stake. I have bestowed nations and kingdoms upon you. If you want any type of woman to marry, of any height, any skin color, any nationality, younger than you or older than you, I, the Lord, Holy Spirit, will find that born-again sister that is the desire of your heart and of your eyes, like I did for Isaac in finding Rebekah for him in Genesis 24. But do not sin against me by despising the commandment of the Lord. Thank God I had started to discipline myself spiritually by reading my Bible, praying and fasting, though I did not understand why I had to discipline myself spiritually like that. The Bible says of Jesus, Therefore in all things it behoved him to be made like his brothers, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of his people. For in that he himself has suffered, having been tempted, he is able to rescue those who are being tempted. Hebrews 2, verse 17 to 18. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, just as we are, yet without sin. Therefore let us come boldly to the throne of grace, so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4 verse 14 to 16 Jesus was tempted by all sins, but he did not sin. So he knows how to deliver me from those temptations. He will teach me how to keep myself and show me evil friends that I need to get rid of in my life. Jerry has no shame confessing his sins and sinful thoughts or shouting on the rooftop what God said to him when he was rebuked. For the person who covers his sins shall not prosper nor be blessed. But whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Proverbs 28 verse 13 you and I are the vessels or the water pots God wants to use. Yes, we might have been for dishonor in our past life before we came to Christ, and people may always remember us for that dishonorable use. But now we need to cleanse ourselves and live in holiness. If we want to be vessels of honor unto our God, so that he can use the words coming out of our mouth to impart spirit and life to the hearers. Paul says, In a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Therefore, if anyone purges himself from these, he shall be a vessel to honor, sanctified and useful to the master, prepared for every good work. 2 Timothy 2, 20-21 Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these he shall do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 14, verse 12 to 14. Brothers and sisters, diligently pray for me, Jerry, that I will never despise God and his commandments by being like the sons of Eli or David in the incident of Bathsheba. May I start well and finish well. There are three areas the enemy attacks ministers of the gospel. Sexual immoralities and divorce. Financial manipulations and heresies or major doctrinal errors. 
Always pray for Brother Jerry all the days of his life. He will not fall into any of these three attacks of the enemy. To be continued.